Gasp says says is a lot of gasps. Hey y'all, it's me, Gina, and welcome to my channel. Today is time for another episode of Diary of the Drug Pimp. Now today is going to be a little bit different because this doesn't really happen in the pharmacy. But if you're a pharmacist, you want to be a pharmacist, or you know a pharmacist, then you probably know what we call rotations. So basically, at the end of your in-school learning, you have your last year of rotations, maybe different from school to school. At mine, I think we had eight rotations the last year. But it's basically where you go off-site to a specialty place, a hospital, different doctor's offices, different pharmacies, and you train in these different areas for free. So basically you work 40 hours a week for free for the last year of your schooling while you pay the school tuition. So basically you're paying somebody to work 40 hours a week. We'll talk about that later, I'm sure. But anyway, this was one of my most interesting rotations. It was actually at a VA hospital, um, not far from my house. And basically on this rotation, the pharmacy students actually got to round with the med students. So we had one medical doctor that was our preceptor that was in charge of all the med students. Um, and we got to round with them. So on morning rounds, we got ready to walk into a situation that we were definitely not prepared for. So we're standing by this guy's bedside and our preceptor goes to pull back the sheet. And when he pulls back the sheets, this guy has got an enlarged prostate. And I'm not talking big and enlarged like a tangerine. I'm not even talking big and enlarged like an apple. I'm talking about big and enlarged like a Spider-Man balloon. This is what his prostate looked like, y'all. Without the Spider-Man look. It was this, this big. Okay. Now let's take a minute to gather your diagnosis. Dr. Smith, can you tell me what's going on with this patient? At this point, Dr. Smith, who was a med student, said what we were all thinking. Yes, doctor. He has an enlarged prostate. And my diagnosis is prostate cancer. Excellent guess, but no, that is not correct. So by now, we were all pretty confused because it seemed quite obvious, and now we're not sure what's going on with this patient. Now, this is a great learning opportunity, and I have talked to Mr. Not the Whole Truth, and he's agreed to let us use his case as a learning experience. Well, that's right. I was vacuuming my apartment the other day, and uh, I guess, I reckon, I backed up into the hose, and it kind of sucked me up in the vacuum. <laughs> okay, hold on. Back up a minute. Did he just say that he vacuumed his junk up in the vacuum by accident? So was he vacuuming naked? Because that's not how I vacuum. I don't like him naked. And did he be backed up on it? Did he not look behind him to see where the vacuum was when he backed up? How do you back up and not know where the vacuum hose is? Okay, okay, wait a minute. Let's just keep going and hope it gets better. So after this happened, I panicked. I swelled up some and it hurt. And I thought, I reckon I ought to go to the doctor. But I was just too embarrassed. So I thought I waited out. And I used some ice, sat on some ice. And it helped a little bit to swallow went down some. Okay, now I'm even more concerned. Did he just say that it was worse than it is now? It's gotten better? How could it have possibly been even more swollen than it is now? We're talking Spider-Man balloon. Now. Actually, I'm confused. Normally in injuries like this, all that pressure causes the tissues to swell and the muscles to get inflamed, which also causes swelling. But it normally goes down after time. 
That is correct, Dr. Smith. This happened two days ago, and the swelling is still bad. Actually worse than it was initially. Mr. Not the Whole Truth is going to tell you what else happened. Wait, what else happened? Isn't it enough to get your mess hung up in a vacuum? Right, okay. So, even though the swelling went down, I realized I couldn't pee. Like, not even a little bit of pee. And that's when I realized how bad of a mistake I made, or how bad the accident was. And I probably should have go to the ER, but I was still too ashamed. But I needed to pee. And I thought to myself, I just need a catheter. And I went and remembered that I had just done clean my fish tank last week. And I had some of that tubing left over where I changed out my fish tank filter. Oh no, hold the phone. Please tell me that this is not going where I think this is going. So then I thought to myself, a catheter shouldn't be that hard to do. Naturally, I cleaned it first. Naturally. When I did that, it hurt so dang bad. I knew I had to come to the ER. I done got myself a nasty infection. I tore some tissues and done busted up some blood vessels. And well, here I am. So at this point, the entire room was in complete and utter shock. And we could not even think hard enough to recommend a treatment. But don't worry. He made a full recovery, and I promise you, well, I don't promise, but hopefully he won't vacuum naked in the future, and he'll always remember to look behind, bah, 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 behind him, and hopefully he will always remember to look behind him before he backs up. I think he put the whole hose in his t and it sucked his t and part of his t his base of his t in it. Thank you. It's time for some rhymes. As healthcare professionals, we remain calm and collected, even in those cases where the patient vacuums naked. We don't need his motive or intent, but we'll use those cases with the patient's consent. It's a way to learn and discover the best course and to learn if you hear hooves and ain't always a horse. Word. Cause you'd have thought he had prostate cancer, but he didn't vacuum naked. He was vacuuming naked and he accidentally backed up into the vacuum hose. Yeah, and then he done accidentally, I guess that wasn't an accident, he done cleaned that fishing hose out of his fish tank and tried to give himself a catheter. What is wrong with y'all people? Don't do that. If you accidentally vacuum your mess up into a vacuum, accidentally drag yourself to the emergency room. Word. <laughs> All right, y'all, be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Don't let me know your patient stories like this down below because it just gets sad sometimes. It just does get sad sometimes. But be sure to hit that subscribe button because y'all know y'all want to. We put out videos every single Tuesday. And sometimes we put them out not Tuesdays, on Tuesdays, but in addition to Tuesdays, some other days. And you don't want to miss it. And you won't miss it if you hit that subscribe button. So hit it right now. Go push it. And we will see y'all next time. Stay sweet, y'all.